Welcome to Alpha Star's series of video tutorials. Today's video explores using the Abacus UMAT plugin for MCQ composites. This video assumes that a calibrated material model already exists within MCQ composites and can be used for the creation of the UMAT. A detailed explanation of material characterization and qualification may be found in our videos and tutorials related to MCQ composites. Here we are in the Abacus CAE environment. Please note we currently do not have any part, material, section, assembly, or boundary condition in place. So let's define our working directory and then import our model. To save time and through the magic of video, I have completed the importation of the model. On close inspection, it should be clear that the model does not support a material specification or a section definition. The assembly does support six defined sets, one for nodes, one for elements, and four for boundary sets that are related to the boundary conditions defined in the tree structure. Now that we have imported our model and corroborated certain constraints, it is time to use the Abacus UMAT plugin for MCQ composites to either characterize and qualify a new material model or retrieve an existing calibrated material model. Please note, the plugin provides an option to the user to secure a material card output consistent with Abacus native format or generate a UMAT that secures the calibrated material model along with the Genoa multi-scale progressive failure analysis libraries. Before completing the transition to MCQ composites, the plugin will ask the user to confirm use of an existing unit system or select a new unit system. We are now in the MCQ composites plugin for Abacus CAE. As noted earlier, we will take advantage of a previously calibrated material model for a four-layer cross-ply laminate. We have the option to create a new calibrated material model, however, that activity is beyond the scope of this video. As part of the importation process, we will be asked to delete existing laminates and material models. Notice the impending change to the tree structure on the left. When fully imported, this calibrated material model supports fiber properties, linear and nonlinear matrix properties, corresponding failure criteria, strain limits, and the predefined cross ply laminate. Next, we will recalibrate the material model and export the results as a UMAT. Option 1 Go to Project on the main menu bar, drop down, and select Save and Return to Abacus. Option 2 Close MCQ Composites GUI. Both options trigger the analysis and file creation. One saves the process, the other does not. Finally, select the type of elements to be used by the FBA solver. For this example, we shall select simple shell elements. Now we are back in the Abacus CAE environment with our UMAT in place. Please note our project now supports a material model and a section along with the previous defined boundary conditions and boundary sets. However, we still need to assign our section and update our orientation. Let's assume we have assigned the section and updated the orientation. Recapping our work, we have used the Abacus UMAT plugin to access MCQ composites, created a calibrated material model, exported the material model in the form of a user material card with Genoa libraries to Abacus CAE, and assigned the material card. We are now in a position to change our working module to job and create a job. Once we submit an appropriate name for our job, we can review our inputs on the edit job table and if satisfied with the contents, hit OK. Now that a job has been created, the next step is to launch the job manager, select the job from the available list of options and hit the submit button to run the analysis in Abacus using the recently created UMAT containing 
the MCQ Composites Calibrated Material Model, and Genoa Multiscale Progressive Failure Analysis Libraries. Please note that the process ends abruptly when Abacus aborts and terminates the analysis. This phenomenon is not the error you may think it to be and is instead consistent with the application of multiscale progressive failure libraries. Specifically, when too many elements fail, the damaged element stiffness and, as a result, the stiffness of the overall structure degrades to a small value. Under these conditions, the problem cannot converge to a static solution and therefore aborts the simulation. In implicit simulation, the user may assume this event is concurrent with failure of the structure. Returning to the tree structure under analysis, we can open jobs, select our active job, and select results to see solution dependent variable two or SDV2, which is a custom designed variable used to assess damage in response to multi-scale progressive failure analysis within the Abacus CAE environment. Now let's look at solution dependent variable two, which is AlphaStar's custom output to express damage in terms of post-process results within the Abacus CAE environment. As we walk through each incremental step, we can observe damage taking place and accumulating in the area where the specimen tapers from its full width at the tab to the narrowed width at the beginning of the gauge section. This zone appears to be experiencing increasing damage resulting in the likely failure of the specimen in this region. As we have seen, the Abacus CAE environment can render damage results related to analysis utilizing the UMAT. However, a more detailed description of damage may be provided by the Abacus plugin for Genoa GUI. Returning to the plugin on the main menu bar, we can select Alpha Star and Genoa to launch the GUI. Once initiated, the first step in the process Ask the user to specify the related ODB file so that the necessary results will be present when the GUI is fully loaded. The time needed to complete this task is hardware dependent and a function of available RAM as well as number and type of processors. Upon selecting damage, a damage index window pops open that not only identifies the causes of damage but also explains the percentage contribution of each damage type. Accordingly, after the first few iterations, 100% of all damaged elements have been affected by damage related to transverse tension and modified distortion energy. The percentages will change over time as the number of damaged elements increases and the causes of damage multiply. As we slowly work our way through all iterations, Notice the change in damage type and damage contribution in the damage index window and notice the change in the number of elements damaged by the growing number of elements highlighted in red in the display view. Now let's launch ply damage. The ply damage index window has the capacity to display more than one ply at a time and more than one damage mechanism at a time with a given offset and a given orientation to improve visualization. While the damage index window cannot identify damage percentage contribution, it does identify active damage types to help clarify what phenomenon is taking place in a given ply. In the current display port, we have selected all four plies of the cross ply laminate and offset and change the orientation of the individual plies to provide a more effective view of damage initiation and damage propagation among the plies. The cross ply 0, 90, 90, 0 layup subjected to an initial longitudinal displacement should reflect damage due to transverse tension in the interior plies and damage due to shear in the exterior plies. As we step through the iterations, the ply damage index box will identify active damage types 
ultimately all damage types will be identified as part of a complete understanding of the mechanisms that come into play during loading. The final iterations show symmetry and consistency of the damage and provide the detailed visualization of the process that was not possible without the Genoa GUI. This concludes our video regarding the utilization of the Abacus plugins to launch MCQ composites to prepare a calibrated material model in the form of a user material card and launching the Genoa GUI to visualize damage identified and predicted as a result of analysis with the user material card. If you have any questions about this video, seek a more in-depth conversation about our products, or just have a general question for our staff, please contact AlphaStar directly at info at alphastarcorp.com or visit us on the web at www dot alphastarcorp dot com. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to your feedback and comments.